Hey, what's up guys? Just giving you a little quick look on my office tank of today. Just showing you what's going on with this. Oh, uh, let me get this uh, magnet cleaner out of the way. Let me bring that up to the corner. I'm just, uh, just kind of cleaning up the glass. But you can see the tank is doing freaking awesome. You can see the growth is just out of hand. Uh, this guy that broke in half, remember that one time, is already basically its old self, already one big ball. And um, you can see it's a little mini, mini colony right there. Look at all the heads it's got on it already. Uh, that is actually going to go probably on that frag plug, maybe right there. Because I'm actually thinking of taking this guy to my local LFS and just giving him this whole cluster here. And um, getting this uh, Walt Disney frag here, giving it more room to breathe. Because you can just see, even though I trim back these Zoas, and you can see I have uh, frag plugs of them up there and they just grow back quickly. Within a week's time, they're already back right there. I can trim this back again like this and they'll just start moving themselves saying, ah, more space, more space, more growth. And uh, next thing you know, they're just right back at where they were when I trimmed them back. Um, chalices are doing great. You know, Acros, SPS in this tank are doing fine. They're doing great. Um, you can see this guy's just literally growing along the back wall there of the overflow. And um, thinking of getting rid of this guy here and maybe breaking off this piece here, like I said last time, if I did explain that, um, and putting it there and letting that piece grow. So I might be giving this big old piece to my LFS also. Um, all I need is a bucket of salt. I'm, I don't ask for much or anything. I just don't have really time to put things on, on the Craigslist and try to get things going. Having a little bit of a hair algae issue. Um, phosphate levels are a little up. So, you know, I am doing no pox, but I've actually been doing a little bit of uh, carbon dosing with uh, Tropic Marin. So I'm trying to... Let me see if I can bring that here. Here we go. So this stuff right here with the MP back to balance. So I'm doing about 0.2, 0 0.2. And I'm dropping that in the tank every morning because it suggests that you drop it in the system. You know, when uh, out, when um, day is about to start. So I guess the lighting helps with the dosage. I'm not sure, but it just tells me that the best time to dose the tank is when the light starts to actually come up with the tank, not go down into darkness, if I'm not saying it correctly. Other than that, um, dosing that, dosing everything that I usually dose, um, I did drop the no-pox a little bit because of the fact that I'm not trying to cross-contaminate something with something and then having some sort of a tank crash or anything like that. So I'm being a little steady, a little slow. I actually started with a point, um, one. now I'm at point two so uh millimeters so i'm just taking it slowly just seeing the effects making sure that nothing negative is happening with the tank but actually i'm seeing some positive results and i'm starting to see that um you know more of the hair algae that was growing around this area here is actually starting to go away that i bought some new astrea snails more of a cleanup crew uh put some uh, more blue legged hermits in there which you can see right there you can see those little guys there so just added a few more guys in there to try to help with this hair algae issue. Basically, it always happens around, you know, this time with the sun and everything, but the winter time's coming in, rain, clouds, so it should diminish into nothing. And that does help with water changes, of course. But um, just making sure that my phosphate levels and my nitrate levels aren't too high. I do have the nitrate reactor. And, you know, even though it has the, whatchamacallit, uh, bio pellets in there, it's one or the other, really. It's either they're going to deal with phosphate or they're going to deal with nitrate. So most of the, most, mostly it's dealing with the nitrate issue. So um, those, bio, um, those pellets themselves are just, uh, they're doing its job. They're doing their thing. You can see everything's working out cool down here. Um, not having any issues whatsoever. But I do see a little bit of a uh, response from the, when I'm dosing the NP uh, Bacto Balance. I noticed that the corals seem to be a little bit more happier, a little bit more open. Um, I don't know if it's just me not staring at the tank every day because I've been so busy, but 
I, I, I'm seeing some positive results. I'm not seeing anything negative at this point, but um, uh, I like what I'm seeing and, I'm like, and, and, I'm, and I like what I'm dosing. And um, you can see there's my sea cucumber right there working. You can see his little things right there just uh, sifting the sand. Great guys, man. I, I, I'm just so nervous to put one back into my bedroom tank, but um, definitely uh, tank's doing great. You can see the overgrowth that's going on. Um, you can obviously see I'm trimming back the, the uh, coral here, which is uh, Milka Stylo. You know, and you can see all the bluish purplish polyps up there, more blue. I don't know if you can see that blue haze, but Definitely, um, it doesn't matter how much I trim back, trim it back, it just keeps growing and growing. Even back here with all this stems and everything, it's like I have no room to frag out and I gotta get that frag tank going. But definitely this system's doing great. I changed the um, wet side of the, of the power heads on the Ecotec MP40s, so I got two new ones up there. I have the old ones actually in my kitchen right now and I'm gonna clean them keep them and use them as a backup in case these ones ever fail i'll just try to keep these ones a little bit more cleaner but if these ones get you know to the point where they got with all that coralline algae growing and a little bit of hair algae and then i'll just take those out swap those and put the other ones in so good as new so i just got some backups in in that case you know somewhat of a redundancy in a way but other than that this tank is looking awesome looking great um, fish are doing fine you know parameters are pretty much set the alkalinity in this tank is at a 7.5 right now I just did all the water testing the magnesium is around 1350 you know I'm trying to drop it down a little bit I still think that's a little too high for me uh, calcium levels are at 440 in this tank which is fine sometimes they drop down to 430 but you know that's that's good that's good I did uh, uh, raise up the effluent line so the drip rate is a little bit more higher or a little bit more faster but um, other than that the tank is doing well still rocking the AP 700s you know with the uh, what is that the uh, 360x oh I left this open oh I left this open because I'm doing the the magnet cleaning I always cl uh, scrub this down at least every day or so but I never leave this in the tank. I take it out of the tank. And obviously you can see when I put the new wet side, you can actually see it's kind of moved out the, a little bit of the sand out of this corner here. So I'm gonna just kind of push it back. You know, obviously it's, um, it's got a little bit more oomph to it now that it's uh, nice and new. But tank is doing well. Uh, other than that, you know, SPS are growing. You can see these guys are just branching out more. This PC rainbow right here is encrusting more, growing out more. Uh, this strawberry shortcake is still growing out more, trying to color. You're starting to see more of that pinkish and green color tone. Um, other than that, guys, you know, everything's set. Everything's good. Calcium reactor is working great. I just put in a new, uh, brand new full carbon tank right there. New CO2 tank and, um, yeah yeah life is great when it comes to the reef hobby you know a lot of things out there when people are saying uh, i've been listening to youtube and i'm pretty sure you guys have been too obviously and um when you hear the question you know is this is this a hobby or is this a is this a style of living or something i think i was listening to what was it reef beef and they brought up that subject also and they feel like it's more like a lifestyle like we choose this to be more of a lifestyle of ours rather than than a hobby i still think it's a hobby you know and um we'll see where this hobby goes we'll see how how long of um of a time frame that you can say that we're gonna be able to actually enjoy this hobby to a point where we're gonna be able to go to our local LFS and enjoy all these different sorts of corals and fish. It just seems like things are getting more stricter and stricter. Like living here in the state of California, it just seems like things are gonna get more stricter, you know, uh, with everything. The eco-friendly state 
and you know the environmentalists regardless of where they come from either ocean land sea air uh, they're all trying to make a statement california seems to always want to do something first so it gets me a little nervous on whether or not you know i'm going to be having to just trim out coral give them out and just try to help out the reefing hobby and trying to get people to stay in this game because you know who knows it's like it's like all of a sudden are we going to be able to get the same type of you know backdoor balance or are we going to get the same kind of chemicals that we're going to be able to get for our reef tanks because of the fact that maybe california might outlaw a few things or whatever but uh you can go to the state of nevada or arizona and get them you know or have them or bulk resupply may only be shipping to certain states who knows how things are going for the future and for the future of this hobby but who knows i just hope it keeps it i keep i just hope the doors stay open you know for all of us to enjoy and you know it's not like we're gonna go to a reef of pollution and they say oh we can't sell you that yeah and it's, it's, it's uh it's not california legal <laughs> i think what is that with calerpa calerpa is not california legal so um think things like that you know you can already see it's already beginning and it's already starting but you know that's what it is it's all an environmental type of thing anyways guys I'm just jibber jabbing I'm just uh, talking nonsense and I just want you guys to know that um, patience and stability keep on thriving with your systems you know don't give up if things go wrong just um, figure things out ICP test testing your water Creating a, a stable system will get you into a thriving, a thriving arena. You know, an arena where you're going to be able to just simply just go in there and battle anything, and just come out knowing that you're just looking at something so beautiful every day, and it's going to be awesome. All right. Anyways, I'm talking nonsense. Peace, guys. I'm out.